Good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, August 23rd at 7 p.m. This is our council as a whole committee meeting. Uh, present from council is Michael Zurin, John Myers, Kim Evers, Ken Hayfley, Jason Kasunik, Dave Spotton. And from the administration, we have Chief Reich, Chief Whittington, Mayor Morley, our Chief Building Official Dave Men, our Service Director Nick Rubertino, our City Engineer Tom Goiter, our Finance Director Carolyn Schindel, and our Law Director Randy Klammer. Uh, if there's anyone recording this meeting as a courtesy to the public, will you please identify yourself so the fellow attendees know that they are being recorded. We have the News Herald and, this, and uh, Mr. Trevisano in the back. Pardon me? Your batteries are dead. Okay. All right. With that, welcome back, everybody. I hope everybody enjoyed the break. And uh, we are, council is ready to get back to work, so we'll move forward. Um, the first item legislation proposed is 082301, a resolution to make payment to the estate of Mr. Slocum for unused vacation time. I'll refer that to Mr. Klamer. Oh, this was, uh, we discussed this in committee meeting. There was some uh, calculations that uh, the final payout that Mr. Slocum thought was due him. So there was this ongoing dialogue back and forth with Mr. Slocum. Um, Ms. Shindell and I went through the ordinances. Sadly, there's Okay, thank you. <clears throat> With that, we move on to legislation proposed 082302, an ordinance to amend section 184.06A, credit for tax paid to other municipalities of the codified ordinances. This was discussed in the Finance Committee meeting prior to our break. Um, since that time, uh, there's been discussion among some of the council members, and we are going to pull that from this evening's agenda and put it in the Finance Committee for further discussion. There is no legislation pending. Under miscellaneous, there liquor license, there's a liquor license permit from Walgreens Company doing business as Walgreens at, at 13058, uh, I'm sorry, Walgreens Store 13058 at 35279 Vine Street. There will be a motion to add this to the agenda later on this evening. Um, there will be an ordinance to revise the codified ordinances by adopting the current replacement pages. This will be added as legislation number 082303. And then there will be a resolution certifying that there are unpaid bills owed to the City of Eastlake. This will be added this evening as legislation 082304. Um, Finance Director Schindel, did you want to discuss that at all? The unpaid bills? Or, or the mayor? I'm not sure. Which one? They are currently they're certifying the unpaid bills owed to the city of Eastlake. Yeah. We need to uh, we need to give the county this information before our next council meeting. So I'm asking for permission from council tonight to be authorized to be able to submit those names mm -hmm. and certify them so that they will be placed on the tax duplicate and we will get our money. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, the next item is a resolution to enter into an agreement and to expend funds from the Competitive Community Development Block Grant Program, the CBDG. This will be added as legislation number 082305. And again, Finance Director Shindell, did you want to address this? We received a grant from CDBG last year. Uh, the money has just come in this year or is in the process of coming in this year. I would like the uh, to be placed on record that we have received the grant, we accept the money, and authorization to spend it for the purposes of the grant. Okay. Purposes. All right. That will be added to this evening's agenda. And that concludes the Council of the Whole Committee meeting at 7.06. The regular Council meeting of Tuesday, August 23rd, 2016, will commence at 7.06. Will Mr. Myers please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance?
Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Stoughton? Here. Mr. Kasunik? Here. Mr. Zerg? Here. Mr. Evers? Here. Mr. Hayfrey? Here. Mr. Pledge? Here. <coughs> Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of July 12, 2016? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hayfrey? Yay. Mr. Stoughton? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Pledge. Yes. Motion carried. The minutes are approved. The next scheduled council as a whole committee meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, September 13th, 2016 at 7 p.m. with a regular council meeting immediately following the adjournment of the council as a whole committee meeting. Um, with that, as I said earlier, everybody welcome back. And we will move on to communications and petitions. Would the clerk please read those? A liquor license request from Walgreens Company doing business as Walgreens 13058-35279-9-3-E-Slip, This was discussed in council as a whole and be added to this evening's agenda. A communication from the Walter Drain Company regarding the August 2016 codified ordinances replacement pages. This was discussed in council as a whole committee and will be added to the evening's agenda. A communication from Finance Director Schindel certifying that there are unpaid bills owed to the City of Eastland. This was discussed in Council as a whole committee and will be added to the evening's agenda. A communication from Finance Director Schindel to enter into an agreement and to expend funds from the Competitive Community Development Block Grant Program. And this was also discussed in Council as a whole committee and will be added to the evening's agenda. With that, we will move on to our committee reports prior to council going on break there was a finance committee meeting and our committee chairman mr. Evers will make his report thank you madam president finance committee did meet before we went on break there was a couple of items up for discussion as announced by the council president the one item will be moved back into the finance committee uh, we will be having a finance committee Tuesday at 6 p.m. Date. Sure. Date will be August 30th at 6 p.m. August 30th at 6 p.m. I am asking that uh, all members of council be present. Our law director, <coughs> Mr. Schindel, our finance director, our finance director uh, Dave Men, will be present. Mr. Rubentino, both chiefs and Okay, just um, Tracy just advised me the WPCC meeting is that night at 5.30. Maybe we can move this. Want to move to 6.30? Want to move 6.30? No. Is that sufficient? Okay, 6.30. All right. <clears throat> Does that conclude your report or are you that still going? That concludes my report, but I also have two motions that need to be made. Okay, so go ahead, please. First motion, I hereby move to add legislation number 082304 to this evening's agenda, a resolution certifying that there are unpaid bills owed to the City of East Lake and authorizing and directing the Lake County Auditor to place these bills on a tax duplication for collection of payments. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hayfley? Yay. Mr. Spotton? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Cern? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Motion carried. Legislation 082304 is added to the evening's agenda. I hereby move to add legislation number 082304 to this evening's agenda, a resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of finance to enter into an agreement and to expend funds for the Competitive Community Development Block Grant Program, CDG. CDBG for the amount of $75,000 for the term of October 1, 2015 through September 30th, 2016. Okay. This is actually, uh, even though it says it's typed here, 082304, it should be 082305. So that is the legislation number. And with that correction to the motion, is there a second? Second. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hayley? Yay. Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Motion carried. Legislation 082305 is added to this evening's agenda. Um, with that, we'll move. We're still in committee reports. 
Um, Mr. Zern, did you have a report you wanted to make this evening? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam President. Um, the economic, East Lake Economic Community Development Committee met today at 5.30. We had a outreach to builders, rehabbers, real estate agents, brokers, uh, to see if we could generate interest in, um, in our city uh, for development with uh, new construction or rehabbing our, our housing um, investment in our city. It was, uh, I would deem it a success. We had about 50 attendees, uh, a lot of good discussion, and some uh, future ideas. Uh, so um, I think it was a, a big success, and that concludes my report. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Zurin? Seeing none. Mr. Hafley, you have some motions this evening? Uh, yes, before I give my motions, um, I'd also like to schedule an ordinance committee meeting okay. for next Tuesday as well to follow the finance committee meeting. Okay. And the discussion will be, we're going to bring, uh, actually reconvene with the, the deer calling that we had brought up uh, a few months back uh, just to see where we're at on that. Okay. All right, so uh, the ordinance committee will um, commence immediately following the termination right. of the finance committee meeting. And I do have a couple of motions. Okay. okay. I hereby move to approve and send back to Columbus, Ohio, with no objections, the liquor license permit request from Walgreens Company, doing business as Walgreens 13058-35279 Vine Street, East Lake, Ohio, and I so move. Is there a second? Second. I'll give it to Mr. Edwards. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Hayley? Yay. Mr. Edwards? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes, motion carried. Legislation, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. and you have a second motion? Okay, second motion. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I hereby move to add legislation number 082303 to this evening's agenda and ordinance to revise the codified ordinances by adopting current replacement pages. And I so move. Is there a second? Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Hayley? Yay. Mr. Stodden? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Motion carried. Legislation number 082303 and 0823. Wait, sorry. I did it wrong. Oops. Okay. 02323. Okay. 082303 is added to this evening's agenda. Okay. Alrighty. Getting back into the swing of things. All right. With that, we'll move on to recognition of the public. Recognition of the public is limited to one half hour, three minutes per person. All speakers are reminded that the remarks will be directed to the chair. Will not involve personalities. Will not involve personalities. The first person signed up to speak this evening is John Farwell.
scare people. Number four, we are not asking the city to approve a controlled, one-time, single-event hunt for everybody to run around and kill deer. That's not what we're proposing or suggesting that we do. I want to set that record straight as well. Number five, we're not asking the city to allow people to hunt with guns in our city. You may or may not be aware, but in the state of Ohio, with a hunting license, you are permitted to hunt anywhere except where city laws and ordinances prevent it. During open hunting season, we have several people hunting waterfowl on our northern border. So you can legally go out on the ice or in the water of Lake Erie and hunt if you want to. That is state property. You can go to surrounding towns and villages that allow hunting. East Lake ordinances prevent all hunting within the city limits. It made sense at the time, but it's time to change. We are asking the city to allow archery only hunting with extreme safety measures and restrictions. A little bit about archery hunters. If you don't know an archery hunter, I invite you to go out and, and meet them. They are a rare and well-respected group of conservationists. They are passionate about hunting, nature, preservation, safety, and have a true desire to fill their freezers with food for their families and families of fa families in need of additional food. I personally am not a hunter, but I know several, and I want these hunters to come to our city to help us before going to another city. It's happening in cities all around northeastern Ohio. Deer have no predators other than the cars that we drive, and they are strictly landlocked in our city by our southern border of Route 2, our northern border of Lake Erie, and the river that runs through the city of Eastlake. They cannot escape, and they will continue to multiply, destroy our property, bring disease like lice, ticks, and Lyme disease. We are asking the city to modify the city ordinances and allow only archery hunting. Here are a few restrictions that we've come up with. There are others, but I will highlight five. Number one. Approved tree stands with a minimum height restriction off the ground. This ensures that arrows from archery hunters go towards the ground. Nobody in the city should be afraid of being struck by a hunter's arrow. And I can assure you and the city with the highest level of confidence that nobody wants a hunt, no hunter wants to shoot a human being. Number two, all archery hunters have to pass an accuracy test at their expense to be approved to hunt. Number three, all arrows must have a cell phone number of the hunter displayed on them. Number four, hunters must have a cell phone report into the East Lake Police Department prior to hunting. Number five, minimum of three acres and up to five parcels with boundary restrictions to the property, uh, to the neighbor property. The list goes on, and our outstanding and dedicated resident, Mr. Vogler, has presented a very restrictive and comprehensive plan to ensure safety. He, unfortunately, could not be here tonight. He's out serving and protecting our country as a federal police officer. The only thing holding this change up is city council changing the <coughs> ordinance. We can kick the can down the street another year, or we can start now to thin the herd that continues to grow more and more. I'm pleased to, 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 to know that you're, you're continuing with the discussion. Um, the city's the citizens of Eastlake have elected each one of you and every one of you to serve us, the people. There are 31 days until hunting season opens in the state of Ohio. The hunters are out there starting to pick their spots, and we're losing out on a great opportunity to improve the city. Thank you for listening. I'll take any questions if you have them. Uh, thank you. I don't. Any questions? No, I see none. Thank you for coming in this evening. And hopefully we'll see you at the meeting next Tuesday. Okay. With that, we move on to... Uh, is there... Uh, no one else has signed up to speak. Is there anybody else wishing to address council? Okay. Seeing none, we will move on to legislation proposed. First number will be 2016-036. Uh, uh, also known, also 082301. Uh, will the clerk please read the legislation? A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor and director of finance to make a payment to the estate of Mr. Slocum in the amount of 
$4,011.65 for unused vacation time and declaring an emergency. Is there a motion to suspend the rule requiring separate readings and readings in full? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hakley? Yay. Mr. Spadden? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Is there a motion to adopt? Move to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hakley? Yay. Mr. Spadden? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Motion carried. Legislation is adopted. Will the clerk please read 082302? Oh, excuse me. Okay, my bad. Um, 082302 is the credit for tax paid to other municipalities, and we're going to be referring that back into the committee, so we will not be reading that tonight. Um, will the clerk please read 082303? An ordinance to revise the codified ordinances by adopting current replacement pages and declaring an emergency. Is there a motion to suspend the rule requiring separate readings and readings in full? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hakley? Yay. Mr. Spotton? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Is there a motion to adopt? Move to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hakley? Yay. Mr. Spotton? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Motion carried. Legislation is adopted. Will the clerk please read 082304? A resolution certifying that there are unpaid bills owed to the City of Eastlake and authorizing and directing the Lake County Auditor to place these bills on the tax duplicate for collection of payment and declaring an emergency. Is there a motion to suspend the rule requiring separate readings and reading in full? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hakley? Yay. Mr. Spotton? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Yes. Is there a motion to adopt? Move to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Hakley? Yay. Mr. Spot? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Motion carried. Legislation is adopted. Will the clerk please read 082305? A resolution authorizing the mayor and director of finance to enter into an agreement and to expend from, from the competitive community development block grant program for the amount of $75,000 for the term of October 1st, 2015 through September 30th, 2016 in declaring an emergency. Is there a motion to suspend the rule requiring separate readings and reading in full? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Spatton? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Hakley? Yay. Mr. Pledge? Yes. Is there a motion to adopt? Move to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Evers? Yes. Mr. Spotton? Yes. Mr. Kasunik? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Mr. Zern? Yes. Mr. Hakley? Yay. Mr. Pledge? Yay. Motion carried. Legislation is adopted. Uh, there is no legislation pending. There is no unfinished business. There is no new business. We will move on to our administrative reports with the first report being from the Mayor and Safety Director, Dennis Morley. Thank you, Madam President. Welcome this evening's meeting. I uh, just want to announce on September 11th, which is on Sunday this year at 1 p.m., uh, we will be having a 15-year memorial service with the VFW, uh, American Legion, uh, the Chiefs and I, and I believe the Mayor of Willowick will be here also. Uh, also, the Ridgewood project that we got through the OPWC monies will commence sometime in mid-September, talking with the with Tom, our engineer, we'll meet with the residents of Ridgewood Drive uh, when that project is going to get, uh, I believe you said mid-September, and it'll be three to four week or six to eight week project. Six to eight weeks. Six correct. to eight week project. Uh, I'll let Tom talk about the possible new OPWC money for next year. Um, I'd like to thank Councilman Zurn tonight for setting up. He did a lot of the work and in inviting all the attendees to tonight's. Uh, meeting that we had, uh, I think it was good. We had open dialogue and with some of the builders and some of the flippers that were here uh, that, that are looking at that the city is more uh, builder friendly these days than from the past. So I thank our building commission for that. I think that we're uh, working with the people that want to come into our city. Um, and 
then also uh, just like to talk about, um, and as everyone knows, all of our directors go above and beyond in this city. Uh, the CBO, we've been having a tough time hiring some people into his department. We've had four people turn down jobs because it's not enough money. So uh, we're still talking this week to trying to find a zoning inspector. First, we went with a licensed uh, inspector that we couldn't find. $22, $24 an hour isn't enough. So we've had three decline that position. So we went to the lower zoning position of $18 an hour. And again, we've, people we've interviewed that applied have declined because that's not enough money. So we will continue to look. But, you know, Dave, for the busiest part of the summer, has run the department all by himself. So, again, we're With that, that concludes my report, and I'm open for questions. Are there any questions for the mayor? Okay. Next, we'll move on to Fire Chief Ted Whittington. Thank you, Madam President. Obviously, the, the elephant in the room with uh, removing of the tax credit, um, I thought about the last couple of days since the, it came about, and, and honestly, uh, anger and frustration uh, with that decision uh, looms heavily on me. Um, and I wanted to, 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 to really weed out why I felt the way that I did so that when I presented it to you that at least it wasn't just some type of rambling. So the anger part of it is, is that I've met with each of you several different times this year to discuss the shortcomings in the fire department. The fact that I need an ambulance, like tomorrow, and that when I have a fire truck that's in my station right now that i got to fill up with air from an air compressor next to it to use it. Um, and, and then, again, the most critical part is that next summer, I'm losing three more people. And I wonder if Mr. Zern's meeting today, when you're meeting with these developers, if you tell them we're laying off more firemen next year, if that's going to draw people in. And so I know that from a political perspective, you guys hear from a lot of people. But I also think you have an obligation to the directors. I think you have an obligation to the people that work here. You know, this is a long time that this city struggled. And when we talked last time, I mean, there was no indication from anybody um, that there was reservation. We discussed it openly. And now, again, I come in yesterday, and I'm, I'm told that it's being removed. And so that's the anger part, because I don't know how many more times I can sit down and paint it a different way to you guys to let you know that the city is in bad shape. I mean, look at the finances. You know, when Mr. Slocum got his report, there's only two cities in the entire state that are worse than us when it comes to the Moody's report. And if you look what they've done, you know, Maple Heights was successful in raising their income tax uh, to two and a half. And Maslin reduced their reciprocity. Those are the two cities that are worse than us. And they actually have to make decisions like that. And, again, I'm not sure if we, if, 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 again, when we talk and I present it to you, I somewhat feel like today that I was ignored or that you don't understand the complexity. Yesterday, the fire department ran 19 runs. 19 runs is what we did. That includes three overdoses, again, in this city, amongst all the other calls that we have to handle. And we have six people on duty, and what, really how we handle that is one person gets in a car and jumps another call, and we do that all day long. So the prospect of going down to five is, is ludicrous, it's dangerous, and it should be something that should be at the top of your priority every single day you come to this job, because it is mine. Now, and the frustrated part of it is, is that, you know, I get an email that talks about you guys being unified on an issue. You know, we put levies up last time, and you guys weren't unified on a levy. You know, we put reciprocity up. You're not unified on, the, on, on reciprocity. So I'm not sure what it's going to take to get you guys unified to get us back on track. That is your job. You guys are in charge of that. And as a director, I've come to you more than once to let you know we have critical things going on. Now, I'm not speaking for all the other directors, but I can tell you that a building that was built in 1958, uh, the equipment issues that I have on, the telephone systems, the leaking roof, I mean, all of those are, you know, the, the more we let that go by, the more critical that becomes. You know, we're in a hole right now because we've done nothing about this for 10 years, and that hole is very deep. And every time we brush it off or we delay it or we put it back in a committee, that hole gets deeper and deeper. And eventually, we're not going to be able to get out of that hole. And I don't know what the answer is going to be. I don't know what you expect out of me anymore. I'm doing three jobs right now. 
I try to be the fire chief. I have to be the department secretary. And I'm running squad again. So I'm giving you everything I got. So again, my anticipation, or at least my expectation, is that you're giving me all you got. And I wonder, again, that's my frustration. Is, is that was that where we're at at this point? Because I've told you, and I can't can't paint a grimmer picture. This is where we're at. So having said that, I'm open for questions as far as that. I'm, I'm very open. I don't go on social media. I don't badmouth you on social media. I'm very open to the public. I've always been open about the fact that I believe in reciprocity is the answer because we failed everything else. And so I'm, I'm always you know, accessible to you and any resident here. I'll stand behind that. I've met residents. I've explained to them. I've showed them the, them the issues. So I, I, I implore you that if you're going to put this in back in committee, that this is just not something we're just going to sit on, that we need to make sure we discuss this. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know of, a, of, a, of another option. We're not going to pass a levy in this city. Nothing's changed with that. These residents don't support levies here. And I know from a political perspective, that's a tough decision. But also understand that every day when I'm doing 19 calls and I'm, and I'm, and I'm making decisions in the field, those are tough decisions. I'm dealing with life and death. You might get some residents that are upset because of decision making, but I even deal with life and death. You know, when I go to someone's house and I say that I can't take you to the hospital you want to go to because we don't have enough staffing, that's a life and death decision. That's a tough decision. That makes people angry. That makes people unhappy with me. And I'm willing to do that because that's my job. So I'm imploring to you as a council in this city, you know, you're going to have to make a tough decision. And that may not be something you want to do. And it may not make everybody happy. So outside of that, uh, I'm open for questions. <clears throat> Are there any questions for the chief? Okay, with that said, chief, um, we are putting it back in committee. And one of the reasons, well, the main reason was is because there were some additional um, potential monetary ways to raise money or alternative ways to raise money. And in fairness, we have four new members. I want to make sure uh, they have an opportunity to be heard and that those additional revenue, potential revenue raising options are discussed and addressed and that they understand the, the potentials of success or not success. The idea was never, my idea pulling, and I'm the one who made the decision to pull it, was never to pull it to kill it. It's to pull it to give everybody on this council a fair opportunity to discuss it, to make sure they're comfortable with it, and um, that it's the best option or the only option, if it is the only option for our city. Um, my instructions to those members is, if you're coming to this meeting, come to this meeting with an idea of how we're going to raise that revenue, that we can't pull this off the table unless we have something to replace it. Um, and with that, you know, we just want to give them an opportunity to be heard. It's a difficult decision. Um, it's, for some people, it's a political decision. It's an unpopular decision. We all know that. It's an incredibly difficult decision for some people. But um, I think out of respect for everybody, that everybody should have an opportunity one more time to understand the significance, to understand the significance of how the committee meeting works and where those conversations have to take place. It, is, it is not to kill it. We all understand, too, that when we left that meeting, we, I know. we were in that direction. So and that's the frustration and, and I, I understand your frustration, and you can look at the minutes of that meeting, and every person in that meeting was polled. Right, absolutely. They were polled. Yes, we and yeah, and so I, I understand your, I share in your frustration in that as well, because we wanted to make it very clear. And again, because it's a difficult decision, um, the last thing we want to present to the residents is that we're not certain that this is the thing to do, the right thing or the wrong thing, or whatever. It's not the thing to do. We want to be unified. I want people to be together. I want it to be a front for the, uh, a unified front for the city. So please give us just a little more time. If, this, if we don't move forward with reciprocity, there will be better ideas on the table. That was the instruction. And it's more than just residents, it's employees. I, I understand. Of guys that overextend themselves every day. And when we sit down and we talk, you can only imagine what goes through their head when decisions like this are made. I, when we sit down as a group and I say to them, next time I met with council, this is the direction we're going in. Let's make ourselves available to them so we can help them. And then you know, the day before the meeting, it's cool. So now you can only imagine when I go back to the say, listen, they fold it. You know, that's frustrating. But again, these are the people that are on the streets doing the good work that we need done every single day. So I, 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 I hope that you understand my frustration. Uh, it's, again, it's just another change of direction that doesn't have any result. 
Again, I've been in this city for 18 years. I've dealt with several different types of council and made up of council. And it just seems like brick wall after brick wall. And, I, and, and, and I'm to the point now where, you know, I need those equipment. But the prospect of losing more people should be, I mean, I, I, again, I'm not, I know that there's a lot of directors around this table. But that should be the gravest concern. prospect of losing more fire. So I'm telling you right now, we can't handle the workload of three less fire. I can't handle it. I'm telling you that now. So. Okay. Thank you, Chief. I understand. Again, based on that conversation, are there any questions for either the Chief or me? Mr. Evers? Chief Whittington, I'd like to thank you for your time and effort. I brought several residents over and they toured the fire homes. It went a long way with them. Thank you. Oh, okay, absolutely. Anything else from Chief Whittington? No. Okay. With that, we'll move on to our police chief, Larry Reich. Ted always says he doesn't speak for all of us, but I think he kind of summarizes the thoughts. The uh, only thing I would add is the, the frustration part of finally having something. And we get asked all the time by our peers, how are things going there? And for the most part, it's like when people ask you how you're feeling. Most of the time, people don't want to know anyway, so we, we don't really <laughs> overshare and, and get into chapter and verse because we all live within our own bubbles. The, um, but to finally have something on the horizon to shoot for, to, to hopefully start to make some progress up to get to some level of normalcy so we can run our departments, and again, that's all the departments. So obviously, we can't find Mr. Men someone to work with, not anything to do with him, because everywhere else is paying so much more, and it's not even attracting enough job for people who are trained in those fields. So that alone should tell us, hey, there's a problem here when we're not getting people to apply for this job, or they apply, and then they find out what they make, and they say, I can't do it. So, um, I'm sure we'll talk more at the next meeting. The um, Yesterday, for those who don't know, we had a homicide in the city. This is not personnel or, or financially related. It, it's something that unfortunately occurs in different um, agencies. It, it was uh, the the person arrested the family member. It's uh, an unfortunate event. I appreciate all the help of the fire department, Chief Whittington, specifically. And then, um, again, it's just been with that text and, and the response you got, it, it just came at a bad time. Nine squad calls and investigating a murder all at the same time that, you know, the one thing that we were both hoping for got I wasn't. I wasn't offended. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have a question, Mr. Mayor? I do. Not a question. Just, and I know the chief is passionate about what he does. And I know I've sent you guys out the email. We also had a, a chemical spill today where we had the county involved. We had ten, nine, nine fire departments help <laughs> us. So again, today, and, and, and I'll say it bluntly, we've had, they have their asses handed to them every day. You know, we've talked about before they came to the position of talking about the reciprocity that I did ask for, police and fire levy. And I think that adds to the frustration because we missed the deadline of August 10th, and I'm not talking for them. And, we, and we've talked a little bit since then.
second fireman that's getting ready to leave. You know, the problems we have hiring there, the problem, you know, the chief's saying we're lose, we have one going on disability, we have three policemen retiring next year, and the problem they, these two especially have is these people stay on the list, and if Willie calls, they're going to Willie. If Menor calls, they're going to Menor. And this is part of the frustration, you know. <coughs> the frustration is on me also procedure, so, I mean, this is a little better than the staff meeting we had on Monday, <laughs> but um, everyone's as frustrated, and, and again, the directors in the city go above and beyond uh, for our residents, and, you know, we've talked about what's it going to take to get a levy passed, and I think we all have not found that answer yet, so, but, sorry, okay. said that during my turn. Right, well, I think that was your question to Chief Reich, but. Yeah, <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for Chief Reich? Seeing none, we'll move on to our Chief Building Inspector, Dave Men. Uh, well, the mayor spoke uh, basically for me about my frustration with trying to get people into my department and uh, just that I strongly support the both chiefs over there for uh, what they have said. And uh, I can't say it any better than Ted, obviously. So. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions for Mr. Men? Seeing none, we'll move on to Mr. Ributino. Good evening, everybody. I have nothing to report today. Okay. Our city engineer, Tom Goiter. How are you doing over there, Tom? <laughs> Big game hunting over here. <laughs> Everything okay over there? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are there any questions for Mr. Guider? Seeing none, we'll move on to our finance director, Carol Ann Schindel. Thank you. Um, just as an update, because of our situation with Moody's, they do call us every year. We do a conversation. They want to read the financial statements. They want to know where we stand. That is right now. We're doing that right now with Moody's. So um, any update that we can provide them in terms of that you're serious is something that they do take into account. Okay. I have nothing else. Are there any questions for Ms. Ms. Schindel? We'll move on to our law director, Randy Klamer. Thank you, Madam President, members of council, Mr. Mayor. Um, real quick, the Belichers dismissed their appeal. Um, O'Connor's was behind on their towing obligations to us, so we terminated that contract for the rest of the year and went to bid loans. Then we'll go through that bidding process whenever we, however we did that last time around, we'll start that over. Uh, but it was under 12.5, so we made that determination. And it, to piggyback on what the, the chief says, and the other thing we've forgotten in all of this is the stuff that the mayor did, doesn't have to do his job is not even part of the conversation anymore. So we have this symposium that was great today. We had these people that came out. They're all excited about streamlining and having development plans and reaching out to developers. I mean, those are all things that the mayor's staff should be able to do for him, an economic development director who focuses on that every day, all day long a rec department that can answer problems for residents that, you know, complain that there aren't recreation programs and it's not easy to get to recreation. More staff in the building department to deal with developers when we want to bring them in and walk them through the city and show them opportunities and vacant properties. You know, that's not even part of the conversation anymore, and we look to that to try to bring in additional revenue sources for the city so that ultimately we can solve the real safety issues that the police and fire need to make sure everybody's safe. I mean, those things work together. Um, but that's fallen out of the conversation, you know, and that's, it's a, just a, a real rich, desperate situation that, unfortunately, the, the new normal is not bringing in revenue, so it needs to somehow become part of the conversation again. But I'm open for questions. Are there any questions for Mr. Klamer? Seeing none. This meeting is concluded at 7.46 p.m.